Hello, 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 hello. Okay, we are moving on with ionic compounds. Okay, we had our first lesson about how to figure out what is the formulas for different compounds, ionic compounds. Ionic compounds is what happens. You've got a metal and a non-metal combining together. We also say that's called a salt. Okay. So um, I'm really going to start where we were in the last lesson because I know it's a bit difficult and I'm, I'm going to take my time here. Okay, so let's look at sodium fluoride. Okay, sodium fluoride is when a sodium, which is a metal, combined with a fluorine, which is a non-metal, they combine together to create a compound. Why do they actually combine together, do you remember? Well, sodium okay, has one electron in his outer shell. You want to get rid of it to be full. Okay, fluorine needs one to get to fill up his compound to, to fill up his electron shell. Okay, so he the sodium will give the fluorine, and then everyone is happy and they combine together because one is a positive ion, cation, sodium, and the fluorine is a, a, a an anion, a negative ion. They're held together. Okay, now what we need to figure out is what is the formula. Okay, so we're going to write sodium. Okay, we know it's one plus, it gives one electron, so it's positive one. Fluorine okay, is negative one, that means it needs one electron. Therefore, the formula will be NaF, NaF, okay? One gives electron, the other one takes electron. We need one sodium, one fluorine together. Okay, right. next one is magnesium fluoride. So we're going to combine, you can see that there, right? We're going to combine magnesium and fluorine, okay? So magnesium in the second column, that means he needs to give up two electrons. Fluorine needs to take one electron, okay? Now, you can see that the magnesium will need to look for two fluorines to give one electron to each, okay? So the, the formula we're going to have is Mg. Magnesium fluoride. Okay, we need two fluorine, two fluorines on one magnesium. Okay, right. Moving on to magnesium oxide. Some of these examples I might have done in the last lesson. I can't remember, but it's just to, to get it, to get it. It's it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Okay, magnesium we said is two plus oxygen is in your six term, six uh, group. That means he needs two more electrons, right? Okay. So he's going to be two minus. So he magnesium is going to give two electrons. Oxygen will receive two electrons. Formula is going to be MgO. MgO. Okay. So that's pretty much what we did in the end of last lesson. Okay. Uh, and I've, what I've worked on to try and push here is to un you understand these. Uh, uh, these are the word symbols. Okay. The word the, the names the English names of these compounds. Okay. I'm going to pause here. And we'll move in a minute. Okay, it's back here again, and we're moving on with ionic compound, but this time we're going to look at things that are a little bit more complicated. We're going to start dealing uh, with three. Okay, so potassium, okay, should be one, two, three. Potassium nitride, okay. Potassium, okay, is K. Remember, you need to remember these letters. Okay, remember from last year. Potassium is in the first column. Okay, you don't need to remember which column they are because you're always going to have a periodic table. So potassium is in the first column. That means it's plus one. Nitride is the ion that comes from nitrogen. Okay, so your nitri nitrogen is in your fifth column. That means it needs three more electrons. Three minus. So potassium give one electron. Nitrogen needs three. So you can kind of easily understand that it's going to be K3N. K3N. Okay? Great. Now, by the way, just this point. The kind of question that I give in the test and in the in, in the, uh, the, the home or the homework that the exercise you're going to do uh, after these is either I'm giving you the English name and you need to write the compound or the other way around. I give you the compound, you write the English name. Now, I'm in... Now, in my explanation, I'm always going from the English name to the compound because that's the hard bit. But if I just write a K3N, that's easy. You know, K is potassium, N is nitrogen, so we call it potassium nitride, okay? 
It's, it's easy. I'm not practicing it. I think you can do it pretty easy. Okay, calcium nitrate. Okay, calcium is in the second column, so it's two plus. Nitrogen has three electrons. And now, ladies and gents, we hit the problem. It's a little bit difficult, isn't it? Okay, each calcium gives two electrons. Each nitrogen needs three electrons. How are they going to work out? So if I've got another calcium, I'm going to draw another calcium, because obviously one is not going to satisfy him. I'm going to put another one. Now, he's going to give him two. He's going to give him one, and then he's full. But now he's got two more to go. All right? So what are we going to do? We're going to have to take another nitrogen. Okay? So he gave him one. So he still have one here. We'll give him the, the second one. Okay? Maybe I'll draw it like this. Maybe I'll draw it like this. So I'm going to write calcium. He's got two electrons. Nitrogen, I'm going to write three circles. Circles means we need to fill these nitrogens. And the electrons. So he's going to go for one. He's going to go for one. But then now we need another calcium, which has another two electrons. This one's going to go there. But now, okay, we've got an extra electron. So we need another nitrogen. Okay? With another three circles. Okay, so he's going to satisfy that, but he still needs another two electrons. So that's fine, you're going to get another calcium, and now it's all sorted. So what did I have here? What's the formula? I'm going to write it here, maybe in red. Okay, I have three calcium, okay, one, two, three, and two nitrogen. So it's Ca3N2. Okay, so it's becoming a bit more difficult, isn't it? Let's do one more and then we pause for a little bit because the video is getting strong. Okay, long. Boron, okay, boron is a uh, free class. Okay, it has, you need to get rid of three electrons. Have a look, it's in, he's in the third term. And oxygen is two minus. Again, we're getting stuffed here. Okay, but let's try and think about it now. Okay, I'll Instead of drawing it, you can draw it as I do it here, you'll get the same result, but let's try and think about it from another perspective. Each one of those, the boron gave three electrons, and each one of the oxygen need two. Three and two. What am I looking for here is like a common, uh, the lowest common multiple, isn't it? The lowest common multiple in three and two, okay? Which is six, okay? Just like here, I had six electrons, okay? So, how many borons do I need to produce six electrons? I need two borons, okay? So there's going to be two borons, okay? Each one gives three electrons, so all together again they give six electrons. And these six electrons will go to how many oxygen, where each one of them need, each one of the oxygen needs two electrons. I need three oxygen, right? So it's O3. Okay, and that's the formula. Can you see that? Did I write it? Yeah. Okay, B2O3. Okay, I'm going to pause here. And we're going to move on to the third part of this lesson uh, after the commercial.